Hello everyone, welcome back to the Matt VidPro AI YouTube channel. Today I am here to bring you the latest and greatest updates in the world of AI video generation. I would say looking back on every AI field at the moment, this is one of the ones that has been expanding the most rapidly as of late. And for the first time ever now, we're seeing the AI video generation technology diverge from its predecessor, the original AI image generation tech. So there's some really interesting stuff going on with the top players in the world of AI video. To kick this off, Runway ML, which is truly the main leader in the AI video generation space at the moment, announced something they call director mode for Gen 2. Now, Gen 2, if you didn't know already, is the main AI video generation software from Runway ML. Up until now, it worked exactly as you would expect. You'd type a little prompt in, and then you'd get videos resulting from that prompt. However, this all changes with director mode. As you can no doubt see from the little clip that Runway ML is providing themselves, director mode allows for insane amounts of controllability more than just your text prompt you're submitting. Essentially, we can have things zoom in, zoom out, tilt to the right, tilt to the left, pan to the right, pan up, pan down, pan to the left. It's essentially a bunch of different camera movements and you can actually also adjust how drastic those camera movements are. We're truly seeing a stark divergence from previous technologies of just typing a prompt in and hoping for the best. Video is so much more complicated than just one AI image, so we need to be able to control where that camera is moving and how things are going to turn out and play out at the end of the day. Runway ML truly understands this, and they are not the only company that does, because Runway ML's biggest competitor, Pika Labs, actually just released a extremely similar feature. New features available to everyone before this was just a private beta. Now when you generate with Pika Labs in the Discord, you could control the camera movement using the dash camera parameter. You can zoom just like we saw with Runway ML, both in and out. You can pan up, down, left, and right. And you can actually combine any two non-conflicting directions. So you can go up and right, for example. And they also have rotate. So this is pretty much just like director mode inside of Runway's Gen 2. So two of the main AI video generation companies announced major features, which are essentially the same exact feature. They're neck and neck in this technology, but how well does it work and what are people doing with it right now? I want to give you guys the full picture on this technology in its exact state at this moment. So this clip here comes from Nick St. Pierre on Twitter. When I start playing this video, a lot of these camera movements do seem more cinematic than they previously did from Runway ML Gen 2. And I gotta say, the overall generation quality of this doesn't really seem to be that much better than what we normally would get, but I think that they're taking the right step in making the controllability there first and foremost, because if you don't have any controllability, you can't really release whatever the creative things that are happening in your mind. That's the whole idea here, right? Is that you're imagining something in your head and you say, okay, I want to create this. You type your prompt out and then you generate it. You do kind of see camera movements in your head, and those are more important than that overall crystal clear generation quality. It's very dreamlike right now, as you can see with Gen 2 and also with Pika Labs, to be quite frank. David Villalva has done an extremely deep dive. He says that after 900 plus rolls of the dice, creating different prompts and using this new feature in Gen 2, he's got initial results and recommendations. With this, we have a little bit of storytelling. Our first shot here and you'll notice that as the camera zooms in more of the plane's wing is revealed and if you were actually physically moving a camera closer to that plane this is what it would look like the pilot would move more to the side and more of the plane's wing would be revealed so that's a very realistic way of doing camera movements it is the same character here now we've got another camera movement panning over as he's about to jump off the plane maybe he's not the pilot after all this is actually a really nice shot but again we've got that sort of stationary camera movement where it's just shot from the inside of the plane. And you can see the inside of the plane doesn't move at all. So that camera is completely fixed, but the rest of it is obviously moving. Then he jumps out and we've got a little bit of panning to the left-hand side going on. Then we've got maybe a, somewhat of a zoom out as he flies down to earth. 
This is like a rotational camera movement. It's fixed on him, but rotating around the rest of the world. Zooms in a little bit. He looks a little bit funky in this shot. And another little pan to the left. And now he's finally safe on the ground. And this is just a stationary, non-moving shot. But overall, you can see that a little bit of a story is told here. And there's definitely a level of controllability that comes with these new camera movement options. I think from that clip alone, it's quite obvious Dave here knows what he's doing. He says that horizontal left or right is fairly responsive and he thinks it's impressive. Oftentimes, unwanted morphs or complete changes in the scene will occur when extending videos beyond four seconds, which is a little bit unfortunate. We still are not even close to getting long form video generation out of these technologies. Morphs will often occur at speeds exceeding three because again, with these panning movements, you can have different varying speed levels. He has been able to combine both horizontal and and zoom, but for some reason, no horizontal and rolling movements. So there are some limited capabilities in terms of combining, but it's still available. Moving vertically up and down has been the most difficult to get perfect results, but you still can get them inside of Gen 2 as he's showing off in this clip. Still issues with distortion on longer videos and on higher speeds. And again, there is some conflict here combining vertical or horizontal with rolling, and it seems to only work with the zoom. Zooming in and out shots are obviously going to be the best here. Rolling works well, but uh, random mutations still do occur. If you're super into generating with Gen 2 specifically, I really do recommend Dave out on Twitter. For example, he's got a whole thread here on generating with Gen 2 in general and really receiving that imagery that you're looking for. This guy definitely knows what he's doing. Now, on the Pika Labs side of things, Mandaro Art here on Twitter is here to offer his first take. Overall, he was very, very impressed with the quality levels that Pika Labs was able to output, but it all seems very similar to Gen 2. Comparing these two on which one is better at the moment is kind of a mixed bag. While we definitely get nice panning movements and zooming out and in, I gotta say I really don't see much of a difference in overall quality between these two. However, maybe Pika Labs carries just a little bit more fidelity, especially this shot right here. Look at those flowers. Really, really nice stuff. So, why don't we take a closer look for ourselves and see what this is all about. Here we are with Gen 2. One thing about Gen 2 I would like to mention is that it's expensive. 15 bucks a month and you only get 125 seconds of generated video every single month for that price, which is not much. So it's expensive. Pika Labs, on the other hand, is still in beta, so everything's pretty much free and you can use it on their discord but of course once they professionalize everything it's not going to be free anymore it's likely to be quite expensive close up of an orangutan all right close up of orangutan and we'll have the horizontal movement to the right hand side the default speed is five which seems a little bit high so we'll knock that down to three and you know what let's do a zoom into his face as well I do like it's just buttons you can click, very simple and easy. Pika Labs, you're going to have to type out all those parameters yourself in your prompt on Discord. Go ahead and generate. Generation time here doesn't take too, too long, but again, you're generating AI video, so it's not as fast as image generation by any means. All right, our video here has generated. Only four seconds long, but overall, it's impressive. Definitely a close-up of an orangutan, and it is definitely panning to the right. Speed 3 honestly seems like it's way too fast for this kind of a scene because the orangutan's face just kind of fades out from existence and it looks like it's a mirror or something like that of the orangutan. Overall though, first impressions, pretty impressed. So now we are regenerating at a much lower speed to see if this fixes that issue. The one thing I could also do is keep the seed exactly the same so it would be literally this clip but improved upon in some way. Okay, this orangutan's a little bit less coherent coherent, but still an orangutan nonetheless. And let's see. Okay, now we've got a little bit more of the zoom in and it definitely still is panning to the right. So the hit rate seems to be decent on this so far. So now I do want to take this a step further. We're going to say it's a close up of an orangutan's eye and we're going to zoom all the way out to his face. 
and I guess I'll specify it in the prompt, but of course we will have that zoom out and we will have it as a speed higher because we're starting at an eye and zooming out to a whole face. So we'll set it to speed three. We'll click the generate button. All right, so far so good. We definitely have a close up of an eyeball. Let's see if it zooms out to reveal his face. Uh, definitely not, just panning across the eyeball. Interesting. As you can see, things are far from perfect. You're not gonna get exactly what you want every single time. All right, let's just up the speed here. Speed 10, why not? All right, speed 10 should be a lot more drastic. I have low hopes for this, but okay, that's actually technically a little bit closer. It's just like several eyeballs on some mutant creature. So yeah, that's the mutating and morphing that we were looking at earlier. Things definitely have a long way to go with AI video generation, but it's still expanding quite rapidly. A year ago, we had nothing. So this is definitely a lot better than nothing. We can DM the Pika Labs bot. All right, first prompt, field of watermelons, camera zoom out. And yes, we are definitely getting uh, some slight camera zoom with this video. It's about the same length as that default four seconds you're getting with Gen 2. So again, it's like super similar, these two companies and their AI video generation tech. The cool thing though is the default here is 24 FPS. So you're getting a decent amount of frames with your four seconds. That's like standard movie frame rates. I would say in comparison to Gen 2, Pika Labs actually generates quite a bit faster. And this is a macro shot of a bug and zooming in. That's about what we got out of this video right here looks pretty good. Again, that quality difference, I would have to say that I think Pika Labs has a slight edge in terms of fidelity and overall texture. Gen 2 is a little bit more mushy. However, I think there might be a little bit more diversity in the kinds of shots you can actually get out of Gen 2. Taking a look at some generations from the community, the dash camera seems to work pretty well with Pika Labs, about the same level as Gen 2. However, you can't really change how rapid the motions occur with Pika Labs, so it seems like mostly everything is just a slow pan. There's no real rapid movements that can be made here. AI video is clearly still very much in its infancy stages. Look, you're not going to be making any masterpiece films yet, but you could still really bring some ideas to life and get creative with it. It's expanding really fast and really rapidly. AI video is actually moving faster than AI image generation at the moment. And what's crazy is there's really only two main competitors in the video space in comparison to image generation as a whole. So much technological development by just two companies. Anyways, that's the current state of AI video generation. Let me know what you guys think. If you make anything really awesome with Gen 2 or Pika Labs, please feel free to share it to my Discord server linked down below. I am at VidPro AI, and thank you so much for watching.